Okay, I'm going to actually, I decided from the previous video, here we have our sum our portion function. I'm going to, I'm going to try to make this a little more readable. I'm going to say int base index gets our portion number is int times portion size. Okay, so the base index is where in our array here again. If we're doing portion two, we want to start here and then work our way forward to the end of portion two. Portion one, we want to start here, work our way to the end of portion one, so on and so forth. So our base index is the index of the element that we need to start at, and then the portion size is where we're going to. So now this should make this uh, for loop a little simpler. For int i gets our base index, i less than our base index plus our portion size, i plus plus. I can bring this up here now. A little more readable in one line. Okay. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> this function again, or method, uh, sums just one portion, and now all I need to do is execute this this uh, method concurrently, meaning threaded, on each portion individually, uh, all at the same time. So let's let's do that. I'm going to leave this part here where we actually all do it at once, and then um, let's let's test it against the uh, threaded version. So for and I get zero, I less than uh, environment dot processor count, I plus plus, let me clear off the screen a little bit. Alright, and then i um, <coughs> going to say var thread gets new thread, I'm going to say sum your portion, and then uh, thread dot start, I'm going to pass I here. So I will go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, on my machine because I have eight logical processors. So when I pass the i here, remember from the previous video, the i gets passed in as the portion number, and then this method simply casts it back to an int. I, I do have to use object because, as the compile time type for this parameter, because of the delegate I'm trying to match, it's that parameterized thread start. Again, let me show you here. I click on thread, hit F12, it's parameterized thread start, click there, hit F12, we can see it has to be a delegate that returns void, takes a single object, um, the compile time type is obj ect. So now we just uh, start eight threads off, tell them to do their portions, um, and then when we get done here, those threads are working away, those eight worker bees are working away, and uh, we could technically, we basically have to wait for those worker bees to do their job. We can't say, go do it, and then just a millisecond later come back and say, hey, what's the result when it's not done computing? So here we go. Let me actually see if I can draw all this out. Here's one worker B, two worker B, three worker B, four worker B, five, six, seven, eight. And they're all working on their portions of the array. So here's this guy's portion, this guy's portion, 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 portion. And some of these threads will get done before others and, and all that. But we, we right at this point in our code, we want to wait for all these worker bees to get done adding up all their numbers. We can't really go forward until we know that they're all done. All right. So so how do we do that? Well, thread has a simple method, makes life simple. I just said simple twice. I'm going to say, um, let's just for, actually I need to store these threads away in a list. I should probably be doing that anyway. List, uh, I, well, it's, I know there's eight of them, right? So thread array, Threads gets new. Thread, oh, come on. Thread array, uh, and I want to store environment dot processor count. Right, I'm gonna have one thread per processor, and then I'm gonna say, say threads sub i gets new thread sum your portion, and then threads sub i dot start. Now, I'm going to use a little bit of a primitive synchronization technique. It's it's very basic and hopefully maybe you never need to use it. Not not saying you won't. I've used it. But uh, this is this is one of the primitive ways of synchronizing with the thread. I'm just going to say for and I, I after I've started them all, I'm going to go through um, the processor count again. So I get zero i less than environment dot processor count i plus plus and I'm going to say threads sub i dot join, which basically means I want to join with you. I want to wait until you've completed your job. And if it's already completed, if that thread is, that I'm trying to join with has already completed its job, then this join will immediately return. It won't even 
take any. Uh, it'll take minimal time. Uh, if the thread's still working, though, I'm going to wait. So basically, I'm going to go one by one through the threads. The first thread, I'll wait a while. The second thread, maybe a little longer. But eventually, they'll all finish up, and I'll just rip right through the rest of them. Uh, but I'm going to join. I'm going to wait for every single one to get done. And when every single one is done, I know that individually each one has assigned their sum portion, this SUM, into their portion part of the portion results array. Okay, remember, let me bring that back up. This array here that's going to store all the individual sums. All right, so now that I have eight individual sums, I need to go through and add up those eight to get my final sum. So let's do that. I'm going to, let's see if I can take that off. Okay. So let's go through. We've joined. We know we're done with all of them. So, boy, this, this is getting a little repetitive, I know. But I get zero. I less than environment dot processor count. I plus plus. And I'm going to say um, long sum two gets zero. I'm going to say sum two plus equals, uh, what did we call that variable again? Portion results. Okay. Portion results. Again, portion results is this array we have right here. All right, so let's go through portion results. Uh, portion results sub i. Okay, and then CW, let's be consistent here. Uh, total, you know, I'm just gonna copy and paste this. Copy and paste it right there. So total value is, oh, I, I called it sum two instead of total two. Uh, sorry for my inconsistencies there with my variable names. I should have called it. Ah, uh, why not? Let's use Visual Studio to do it. It's total. I'm going to call this total one. Control dot. Hit enter. Let IntelliSense. Uh, uh, preview changes. Yeah, apply. And then um, instead of sum two, I'm going to say total two. Control dot. Uh, enter. And that changes all those. Okay, so total one, total two. Also, we need to do our stopwatch again. All right, the whole purpose of doing this threading is to take less than 1.5 seconds to add up all these numbers. So let's uh, let's reuse our stopwatch. Um, I don't know. Let's 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 yeah, we'll do it right here. Okay, so watch dot. I think there's reset. Good. Watch dot start. And then when we're done, we're going to join. I'm going to add up all the results. So here, when we're done with all that, I'm going to say watch dot stop. And then we'll just reuse this watch dot elapse down here. So, so the first approach, just like we used before, all of it on one thread, rip through every single number one by one, um, get the result, and it takes roughly a second and a half. Uh, the second approach is divide and conquer, bust it up into eight different sections. There's uh, some maintenance, creating the threads and all that. But in the end, I got eight threads working concurrently to sum all those numbers. I'm going to see how, how long did that take, so to say. So let's run that. Control F5. Drum roll, please. Let's see. It's got to get to the point where it's uh, generating the numbers, and then it's going to do the summing. If you remember, generating actually takes longer than the actual summation. Whoa! Okay, so look at uh, that win there. We first of all, that's both totals were the correct value or the same value. That's encouraging. Okay, now single threaded, we got 1.52 seconds. That's roughly a sec second and a half what we're used to. But down here it took 0.4 seconds. That's that's a that's a significant increase over 1.5. Oh, but but notice if I bring up calculator here, all right. 1.52, if I divide uh, 1.52, oh no, let's go out a little further, 15844. If I divide this by the number of processors I have, which is 8, um, if, if in a perfect world, it would take 0.19 seconds to add up all those numbers. But it's not a perfect world. I got the screen capture in the background, oh, threads, creating a thread has some overhead, there's some stuff that I haven't really talked about when creating a thread and has to go allocate some stuff and talk to the operating system and there's just overhead it's, it's going to cause some lag but that's overhead I'm willing to trade because even though I don't get 0.19 seconds I get 0.41 seconds which is roughly double of what I sh I thought or mathematically I should get all right so that was that was a big win that was good I I like that and um I thought it was a good contrived but a good example if you have a large data set and you can divide the work up between multiple threads do especially if you have the processor power for it you know I want to actually run this with a 
task manager. Oops. Ta I better bring that file back up. I want to run that with task manager uh, in front of us. So control shift escape. Task manager, you can see not much going on here because I only have one thread generating the numbers. Not very interesting. The summation part happens. Uh, jump to 47 there real quick. We never really floored it, it doesn't look like. But we can see, ah, press any key to continue. So that's good. It'd be interesting to take this example, and I encourage you to do this on your own time. But maybe add some more threads. I don't think that will give you much, but because I only have eight logical processors. What if I bring them down and I have four cores, so maybe if I just did four instead of eight, would I get the same results if I did that? So on and so forth. Those are interesting tests to get, play with, learn from, that kind of thing.